and welcome everyone. I am Ali Juno and this is my crafty corner. It is time for Stitch With Me number eight. Eight. Um, welcome to my channel. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, if you are a new viewer, I hope you enjoy my channel. Um, please, if you would, if you feel like it, you can hit the like the video and subscribe to the channel so you see when I have any more videos pop up. Um, I'm trying to make sure I get one up about two times a week. I do stitch with me's um, on the weekend and then I do a floss tube on Wednesdays 90% of the time. Um, this is my channel about my cross stitch projects. Um, Sorry, words disappeared. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, this is my channel about my cross stitch. Today we are doing a stitch with me. I am working on my Kitten and the Rose Haid um, by Zindi Nelson. Um, I am currently almost, almost at 21% done. <laughs> Um, I'm just up here in the top of the ears. Sorry for the shaking. Give me just a second. Let's see, give you a, a view of it. I've got the top of the head done, and now I'm starting in. And I should get, I think, um, I'll probably be maybe just touching into the eyes. And by the time I finish this row of pages. So let's go ahead and get started and let's discuss, see, I'm going to do an update on how my week went um, and then um, from there maybe talk about my project a little and then maybe we can, um, I have a few like stories I guess of lifetime events that have happened throughout the years, so we will see how this goes. Um, so, um, as I, if you are a returning viewer, you, if you were able to watch the last one I filmed, I did get my car back. Um, I am so happy to have my, my vehicle back. It's been in the shop for a month and a half. Let me see. Make sure everybody can see what I'm doing. Um, it's been in the shop for a month and a half, um, but we finally got it back on uh, on Monday. No, I got it back on Tuesday. Um, and I have enjoyed. It's been nice at having it back. It is it so it's such a different thing driving a rental car compared to driving your own vehicle it's i don't know i feel more comfortable in my own car than somebody else's um even a rental you know because like if i accidentally scratch the side of my car that's my fault and that's mine to deal with i scratch a rental cars that's instantly coming out of my pocket. There's no waiting to take care of it. It's being paid for as soon as I return the car. You know. But, and my car is back and it's running as, you know, great. Been no issues with it. I'm taking it tomorrow to go visit family. Um, it'll be about an hour or so drive so that'll tell me definitely if there's any kind of issues with it Oops. move that back um, um, work was crazy as always um, it's the bit school return to school is a big thing for a couple of my clients um, a couple of my work 
we have a couple of school-based uh, clients. So with the return of school, things are getting super crazy. Um, good news on my job though is is they they are um, giving everybody a raise starting the month of August. Um, they are also doing a um, a August summer bonus is what they're calling it. If in the month of August, if you have perfect attendance by the end of August, you will get a bonus in September. You know, as long as you have a full perfect attendance in September, you will get a couple hundred dollars bonus, which I can always use a couple hundred extra dollars. Go buy me some stitchy stuff. <laughs> The more fabric, uh, also more um, words, thread, <laughs> some more floss. Uh, if you haven't noticed in a couple of my videos, me is sometimes me and words have fights. Like I know what I want to say, but that's not what comes out, or doesn't let my mouth bring the word out. I stumble over it. I know what I want to say. It just doesn't want to say it. Um, let's see. That's about all I've got work-wise. We're just crazy busy. Back-to-back -back calls. Luckily, most of it's just password resets for people. So it's... Not real hard work. Um, okay, so on to um, last week's video. I felt horrible for my last stitch with me because I did not realize my head was popping into view way more than I even knew. Um, so this time I made sure that there was no way that my head could pop into, <laughs> into the camera view while I'm stitching. That way everybody can see what I'm stitching and not have a blocked view. Um, I am really sorry for that. Uh, so hopefully the videos from on and now on out um, are way better for you. Um, and let's see the next subject um, going on in our in my life. Um, not much more with me. Um, well, not quite true. Um, my middle daughter is now enrolled in a specialized class, um, for school this year. She is learning, um, she is taking courses, I, uh, like early college courses for, um, an early childhood development classes is what she's doing. Um, but she has to be at the school in the mornings at 6.45. Um, the bus doesn't run till 7. It's like 7.20 here. So, I get to get up a little earlier than normal so that I can take her to school before I go to work at 6.30. Um, so, what I've decided is since I have to get up a little bit early than normal, I decided to go ahead and get up about an hour earlier than normal and go ahead and get a morning workout in before I start my day. Since I have to get up a little earlier anyway, 
it's easier for me to go ahead and wake up and go jump on the treadmill and do the exercise because we have a couple of we have a couple of weights um, that I can use to do some of the regular workouts. Um, all right, give me just a second. I gotta finish this thread off. Which the way I finish my thread is normally I do a loop finish. So I go make like I'm doing a cross and then on the last one I go back down three come I go up three back down ah don't do that and pull my needle out <laughs> ah. there we go what was that I'm gonna watch beeped I can still do it Okay, um, and I make a loop and then I come up the fourth one and go through it. Then I go back down this one and like you can pin stitch it, but I have a hard time pin stitching. So I just go over and down a few and make a waist thread. And I leave that there. I fill my rest of this up and then I snip it. Um, and that's, that's how I end 90% of my threads on this project. Um, three, seven, nine. <laughs> uh -oh, come on. And then... My starting method, it sometimes depends on how many stitches I have to go on how I start. Um, like this one, I have a lot of stitches here before I have to um, worry about a you know, different color. But like if I just had one stitch here, one or two stitches, I would do the loop start. Um, on it. Yep. Um, I would do the loop start, but since I don't have that many, I'm going to do this. I do not know what this one is called. in my way. There we go. There we go. And now I am on the roll again. Um, so I totally jumped off of the subject I was talking about. I apologize. ADD. Oh <laughs> uh, no. Um, so, um, yeah, I get up in the mornings, I go jump on the treadmill for about 30 minutes. Um, then I go from the treadmill and start working out with our weights. Um, we don't have very heavy ones. We've only got about, we've got a, a barbell um, with uh, about 20 pounds on it. Um, and then we have a couple of hand weights that we that I use for other exercises. Depending on the day, depending on what exercises I do, I've just started doing it, so it's not anything real strenuous. Not very many reps of any particular one. I really am not trying to lose any weight. Um, if I do, that's great. But I'm okay with where my weight is. Um, I'm just trying to 
tone up, I guess is the best word to say. I want to make it where I just want to tone up so I'm not, I don't got the flabby belly. That is the only thing I don't like about myself is to me, my belly, you know, is fat. <laughs> um... I, I know I'm not obese. I know I'm not overweight, even though I am, you know, on the charts, I'm considered o overweight due to my height and um, how much I weigh. Uh, I totally messed that up. Okay, just a second. I gotta fix that. That would drive me batty. I basically did a pin stitch. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, by the ch by the weight chart, I'm considered obese because um, I'm only five six and I weigh 170 pounds. Just barely in the obese, but I'm considered obese. Um, but my BMI is where I'm supposed to be. So I am not overweight if you count my BMI. It's just, you know, the the weight chart that everybody tries to follow. But like I said, all I really want to do is tone down the stomach so that it doesn't pooch out. Like, you know? If it does, it does, you know. If it never does, I tried. <laughs> but I mean, within the last year, I, you know, through exercise and curbing my diet and what I eat and all that stuff, I actually managed to lose 35 pounds, I believe, I think. Um, I went from larges being too tight to being able to fit most mediums nowadays. There are still some mediums that are on the smaller size and they just don't fit. But... Um... And, uh, like, yeah. What was I talking about? Sorry, I lost my train of thought, like, just out of the blue there. Oh, yeah, okay. Whew, I got focused on my work here, and I totally forgot what I was talking about. Basically, I'm done with that conversation anyway. I don't really have any more to say about it, you know. It was hard um, to lose the weight because it's so easy just to go eat whatever you want and not eat the right calories. Like literally, the way I did it was I counted calories. Um, I didn't eat more, well, <laughs> for like two months, I didn't eat more than 600, about six to 700 calories a day, the whole day. I only ate about six, 700 calories. Um, I'd basically just eat celery, cucumber, and watermelons, and then just have a small meal at night not really the healthiest healthiest way to do it but that that's how I did it to start and then I I evened off to where I was eating about a thousand calories to a thousand five hundred um, in a day you know now I don't really watch all my calories I do try to make sure make sure I don't eat 
more than the 2,000 that is needed per day. Um, because like I said, I'm not really trying to lose weight anymore. I'm just trying to tone what I have up. So, um, all right, so my, the other subject I wanted to bring up on my life events is not necessarily my life events. This is my daughter's. Um, she's been working, um, she turned 16 this year. She got a job about two weeks after she turned 16. A week after she turned 16. I think it was a week after she turned 16. And, uh, you know, he hadn't been giving her a lot of hours. And she kept requesting more. And he just hadn't been able to do it. So she put in... Um, well, she sat there and heard him tell the new hire that if he didn't put you on for more than four days a week, you know, three to four days a week, he didn't want to fire you, but he didn't. Re he really doesn't want you there anymore. Which my thought on the matter is: is why are you telling a new employee this? Because the girl just started that day. And he said it while my daughter was easily within hearing range. And he's only been giving her two days a week. And that's with her going, hey, can I get more more hours? So that night she came home and put in a new application somewhere else. Today, she gave her boss her two week notice because she goes to orientation to start at Walmart making more money and for sure gonna get more hours on Tuesday. Well, she goes to orientation on Tuesday and then gets her hire date, but um so she she's she worked at the same job for four months. And truthfully, the only reason she's quitting it is because she's not getting enough hours and certain things that he says within her range that good thing I haven't heard. <laughs> I told her she's nicer than me. I would have done one up to him and gone, what did I do to piss you off? <laughs> but... So she'll be able to start bringing in full-time paychecks. Well, as full-time as students can get. They're not allowed to work full weeks, 40-hour uh, weeks. But um, I do believe she can get 25 hours a week. And she's only been getting 10. 8 to 10 hours a week. So she's definitely looking forward to a full paycheck. All right, um, the only other news I've got for my life is kids start school next week. Not really looking forward to it from what they're saying, but yeah, it's not really going to change much for me. I work during the day and they're really normally sleep till about noon anyway. And uh, even when they're awake, they don't normally make enough noise to bother my work day. Um, the kittens make more noise than they do. One thing nice about having teenagers, they know, hey, mom's working, be quiet, she's gonna yell at me. <laughs> So, I think that's about all I've got for the current life update. Um, 
my other daughter, or my other child, um, sorry, they don't like to be referenced as a girl, so I apologize for that. They're doing all right. Uh, they have been dealing with migraines recently. Um, they, they said they've been getting a migraine every day. Um, not been able to pinpoint what it is, so we're going to... If she's still getting migraines by next week, she's going to go to the doctor. So, hopefully... Hopefully she's okay and she's just stressing over things right now, which is causing the migraine. Because she... Um, they... Um, they do stress over things a lot. So, hopefully it's just stress and she can kind of de-stress. So, see, and I snipped that. Alright, so we are done with this section. Do -do -do, bring this over. And this one over. So now I've got these two for this one. Let me mark my stuff. Oop. Come on. <laughs> Not doing it. Thank you. There's that one. Alright, so we are going to start with the black. Um, let's see. For my stitchy, on my stitching, um, I like this pattern. Um, this particular project, I get a lot of stitches in because there's only like two or three colors in these particular ones at the moment until it gets further into the eyes. So it doesn't take that long to complete a square. Um, I am parking. Um, about the when it's full coverage that's how I like to do it I enjoy parking and I definitely enjoy doing the squares trying um, diagonal I really don't know if there's a name for it but I I really enjoy doing it did you okay um, I do have to grid my own fabric and I just recently started um, I've got a couple of pieces of pre-graded and I will most likely be getting more because I'm doing my other pattern um, my harmony it's a free paid that I got I'm doing it on 18 count pre-gridded and I'm loving the fact that I don't have to worry about my grid lines it, the grid lines are already on there for me because like once I I'm going to have to um, like right here that's where my grid start stops so I'm going to have to manually you know put my own grids in for um, and it's so easy to mess up the grids when you personally do it yourself. It's so easy. I actually tried creating this without grids. Like when I first started, I didn't grid the fabric. So I was like, oh, it's full coverage. I don't need to. Yeah, I do need to because I don't stitch. Um, 
row by row. Like if I if I did like this color and then like any color that got in the way, a, a single row stitch, I guess is what it's called. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but if I did that kind, then yeah, I could get away without gritting it. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um. What was I talking about? I, I know I was talking about pre-gridded fabric. But I don't know where my conversation ended at. Okay. I apologize. I have completely lost my train of thought and I don't know what I was talking about before I had to run downstairs real quick. So we're just going to continue with something else, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna move along. I apologize. I really have no clue what I was talking about before I had to run downstairs real quick. So, let's see. So, I guess we will we'll do kind of like a story time, I guess. Um, I'll give like something that happened. Oh, crud. Alright, I'll just sit there and wait. Um, I forgot a stitch up in the top corner, but oh well. Okay, um, so, uh, this is going to be a story about my son, about an, something that happened that, um, to me, I thought, you know, it was, it's an important story in our life, and I've, I just want to talk about it. I have a 13 year old son who is severe ADHD with autistic tendencies. Oh, well, he has actually recently been diagnosed as autistic on the lower spectrum of it. Um, but he wasn't diagnosed at this point in time. Um, it took a long, uh, quite a while before they finally put him in specialized classes because he was severely ADHD. Um, he's been on medication since he was three for ADHD, um, for school only. I don't make him take it during the summertime or on the weekends. Um, I just want him to be him. But my son has always been the type where, you know, he has to like you or care to care if he upsets you. So, like, the event that I'm talking about happened years ago. It happened in, oh, what year? I think it was in, like, 2015. Um, for Jaden, when he misbehaves, for, when my son misbehaves, he, you know, the way we would get through to him, because he has, he's always been very big in electronic and video games. It's his go-to thing, it's what helps him calm down, 
Um, it's one of the few things that he can actually sit there and play and not jump around like crazy. And I'm going way too far. The stitch does not need to go this far out, but so one day he was in school and he was being bad. Like they called me up to the school and he was throwing papers around. He was throwing chairs around. You know, he wasn't mean or aggressive about it. It was just ha ha giggle giggle. Cause it was funny to him, you know? And they couldn't get him to do anything. And uh, they called me in to come help settle him down because they, they just couldn't get him to quit. I walked into the room, like I watched him for a minute to see what he was doing. I walked into the classroom. He saw me and he started coming right at me with a smile on his face. And I looked at him and was like, We've, you've lost the access to the iPad, or to the tablet. Are we also going to lose the access to the Xbox? And he instantly stopped, started crying, and I was like, okay, now go pick up everything that you just did. And he proceeded to pick up every paper he threw down every chair he knocked over and then came over and stood very calmly beside me and the teachers were looking at me like I w had just lost my mind like how did I do that um, how did I get him to just behave basically and I'd been telling them for the entire school year Jaden, my son, sorry, works with rewards. You want him to do something? You say, hey, I will reward you if you do this. You want this car. I want this done. And he will do it. And he's still that way to this day. You know, oh, you're being bad. Well, I'm taking this away. And it, you know, it, I guess to me, it seems like it helps him be able to ground himself to go, hey, I need to do what I need to do. He's a lot better nowadays than he ever was. You know, he knows a lot of times when he should be doing something, even when he's not, you know. He'll, he'll come and apologize to us because he's like, I'm sorry, I know I need to do it this way. I will try to do it that way. But it was just the teachers never believed me when I told them that they needed to, like, reward him to get him to do stuff. And then to take away that reward when it he was being bad. Cause it like, it's like a switch in his head when you're just like, oh, now you've lost access to this. What else are you going to lose? Okay. Make sure I was in the right spot. Um, yeah. So, you know, and it took, it's like every time we had to move, I would tell his t new teachers the same thing and they'd never believe me. They just do try to control him the way they controlled all the other students and I'm just like, okay. You know, um, now the school that he's in now, he's been here for the last four years and he has made leaps and bounds in progress. Because this school actually listened to what I said. This school actually took into consideration what I was telling them. 
you know. Jaden, if he, my son, if he doesn't like you, if he doesn't care, he's not going to try to be good. Because he doesn't care if he upsets you. He doesn't care if you're happy with what he's doing. Um, I know there was one school where they called me one day and asked me if he had ever tried to bite me before when he was restrained. I looked at him and I'm like, I've never had to restrain him. So yeah, I could see him biting you. <laughs> That's a terrifying experience. We had a long talk that day. Move that down. Yeah, I had a long talk that day with the teachers. There was no more restraining. Because there is no call for it. Normally he was just riled up and I told him, I was like, you know, I know you want to control him yourself, but with him, I guarantee you, you call me, let me say one, you know, let him know that I'm know what he's doing and he's not happy and I'm not happy about it. He will behave. And that's what they started doing. They finally started calling me anytime he was like too uncontrollable. And I would talk to him and he was good for the rest of the day. They never had any more issues out of him. And it got to the point where I would be like, okay, you be good. Don't make the teachers call me. Otherwise, when you get home, you're not getting this. Because I had, you know, he was... Like six, seven, eight, somewhere in there, six, seven, eight, somewhere. I don't remember. I don't remember. That was too many years ago. Um, yep. Now, this current school, they're real good with him. He's in a specialized classroom. The teacher understands how he works. Um, there's only been two times that she's had to call me and that was when he was out of medication, um, to get him to settle down and act right. But that was, that's been like two years ago, a year ago. I think that was a around about a year and a half ago. Not quite two years. Um, but, you know, he likes his teacher. He likes going to school. There is no fight getting him to school. You know. Unlike my other two kids. My oldest was the worst about getting up to go to school. My middle one, she... She procrastinates getting up, but she doesn't really throw a fit about going to school. She prefers to go to school. She has too many friends. She likes to see him. Um, and, uh, now my son... He is wanting to, like, he, he's, he struggles with anything like reading or words and stuff like that. Social skills are not a strong thing for him. You give him math or strategies, like, a, like, give him a strategy game, and he's good with it. He's good with video games as well. Um, nope. Too far down. There. Um, he's really good playing with beating bosses and learning the strategy of video games. Um, he's really good with math and coding. Like there, the school has been teaching him how to do coding of some kind. I'm not sure of all the details on it, 
but um, they state that he's good at that. He's better at reading and stuff than he was. Um, he can write sentences. Um, he's 13. He's in eighth grade. But his learning level is more like fourth. Um, a fourth grader. Um, going into fifth, I believe. Um, so he's making a lot of progress, which when he started, he, when he was in sixth grade, he was only barely at first grade level. So he's made massive improvements over the last few years to, to jump from there to, um, like fifth grade reading. Um, all right, so there's that one. Okay. All right, now I've got to do is another color. Did you? All right. Gotta grab my, my thread, grab my one piece and pull it out. I love using these things for my thread. I've talked about it before, but I recently bought a stack of these. And once I use all those, I will probably start trying to create little ones of my own that I can put on a ring and keep with my projects. I'll probably just get, hmm, it does not want to go in. Uh, I'll probably just get some card punch, card punch th uh, tools and uh, just use some stiff cardboard. Since it's just stuff for me, it doesn't need to be fancy. It's just stuff that, just what I'm gonna use for myself. All right. There, here. All right. Nice and taut. And the thread is gone, so I don't have to nip it. I always try to make sure I don't have to, you know, I have to use the scissors for the waist threads. But for starting threads, I don't like using scissors. I like pulling it until the, the nip is underneath. And it's not in use anymore. Um... So that was the story or the life event of issues with teachers and my son. Um, probably, I'm not sure I'll have too many more like that. Um, Cause like I said, he's matured a lot in the last few years. He understands a lot more nowadays than he did. Um, now he he he's learning the concept of time. Like used to, you could tell him five minutes and or ten minutes, thirty minutes, and he just didn't get it. Nowadays, you can sit there and tell him five to ten minutes. And he can actually pinpoint what time he needs to come back and ask, 
you know. But for like up until last year, he didn't get it at all. You know. But he has made tons of progress over the last few years. Um, definitely the last over this last year. So I'm hoping to see even more. Um, now that we've got him diagnosed, maybe, you know, we can get him a little more um, counseling to maybe help him proceed to, you know, adulthood. Because as of right now, it's hard to see him living anywhere else but here. But we will see as life goes. I'm really hoping everybody was able to see the, the pattern well this time. Um, I know my head hasn't been in the view. <laughs> but hopefully my hand hasn't covered it completely. I've been trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing without my hand blocking everything. Once I finish this square, that will probably be the end of my thing for the day. I'm not doing this one because it's the black and I will catch that when I come back up when I clear do this square. Um, if anybody has any questions to ask me, they can put it in the post or in the comments. Um, I gladly will answer questions. I will answer it on the next stream. Um, probably, I think I'm going to answer them, you know, on my floss tubes each time. Um, I know the last comment I had um, was about my camera angle and I like I said, I really apologize. I had such a bad camera angle last time. Um, I hope it's better this time. Um, yeah, and I know the last video I was talking about what to do with my quartz, my end threads when I'm done with them. I've been saving them for the last year. Um, so what I've decided to do for sure is put them to the side for now. Like I, do I have them nearby? Yeah, I have an old, um, bag and I put all my threads that were in my little heart and this bag and I'm gonna keep it go ahead and put it up so I don't <laughs> lose it um, I'm going to keep it and uh, when it gets closer to Christmas and they start putting out Christmas bulbs um, I'm gonna get a clear Christmas bulb and I'm gonna put all those in there and I'm gonna do that every year just let this build up for a year uh, or until it's full um, I don't know I I did a lot of stitching last year um, in the last year I think I've I think I completed seven projects, eight, maybe eight or nine projects last year, or in the last year, not last year, in the last year, um, from uh, the end of July to now, 
to the end of July to the end of July, I completed about nine projects. Um, and that was all my thread, 90% of my threads. Um, I know there were some that I didn't get put in the jar. I didn't, you know, I think the first month I didn't really use a jar. Um, but yeah. Maybe two. But I have bigger projects now. The a lot of the projects I were doing were smaller. Um between two thousand to eight thousand stitches. Um compared to my two hundred thousand stitches <laughs> that I've been working on here recently. Um, so we'll see. I will see if I have the same amount next year as I did this year. At this time next year, I guess I should say. Um, or if it fills up before then, we will see. I almost got this row done, and this will give me, this would give me right at 200 stitches for this dream. Like I said earlier, this one here is kind of, you know, fairly easy to get um, 200 stitches within the hour because it is only two to three colors per square for most of these squares. And some of them only have one or two colors, uh, one or like 90% of the time there's one color that is 90% of the square. So it's not a whole lot of color changing in the square. I will say I do like the fact that my two other projects are brighter colored. Um, I love this pattern, but it does have uh, a lot of very similar colors. A lot of the same gray, you know, different tones of grays and blacks and browns. Eh, I think there's only one actual brown, but you know, you have your black and you have, you know, you have your 310, your 37.99, which are similar. And then you have a bunch of grays. Um, and then some lighter, lighter kind of like purplish grays. You know, one of my other projects has a bunch of bright blues in it, and that's interesting. Blue is my absolute favorite color. Um, it's not my only favorite color, but it is the color I tend to lean towards most, is a blue color as you should be able to tell by my logo. It has a lot of blue. My, I have a shirt that has my logo on it. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. I have a real bad habit about losing my train of thought when I get sidetracked. Cause I, once again, do not remember what I was just discussing. I know we were talking, what? I think we were talking about my fabric, my color, my patterns. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that there was a bunch of blues, that blue was my favorite color, um, but it wasn't my only one. And then I showed my logo. Okay, okay. All right, 
So one more stitch and then that is going to be the end of me. I hope this video was better than the last stitch with me. So thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed the stitch with me today. Um, we got two squares done. So I think that was pretty good.